Hello and welcome. In a previous video, I showed you how to install the FreeNAS operating system onto a virtual machine. In this video, I will show you how to boot up the FreeNAS operating system on the virtual machine and how to configure it to the point that you are able to administer FreeNAS um, via a web browser, any web browser. Before we even begin to boot up the virtual machine, we need to add a new virtual hard drive. So I'm going to select settings and select storage. Now, as you can see, our virtual machine already has one virtual disk, but this is the virtual disk onto which we already installed the FreeNAS operating system. But FreeNAS, as the name suggests, is a network attached storage operating system that allows you to administer storage devices. Now the purpose of this video is to demonstrate as fully as possible the features and functionalities of FreeNAS within a virtual machine. So to that end, I must create a new virtual hard disk within the virtual machine that we can in fact administer with FreeNAS. So to that end, I'm going to select the plus symbol over the square icon, which indicates add a new hard drive. As you can see the tooltip there, add hard disk. So I'm going to select it you're about to add a virtual hard disk to the controller IDE. Yes, that's exactly what I want to do. I do not wish to choose an existing disk, rather I wish to create a new disk. So let us select create new disk. Let us choose the default option, the VDI hard disk, hard, virtual box hard disk image and select next. Next, I'm going to leave checked the dynamically allocated option. This allows us to select a disk, which will be minimal in size and only grow to the size, up to the maximum limit that we set as and when needed. So it's a very nice feature as opposed to allocating the entire amount off at the very beginning. So the new virtual disk, I'm going to call it free NAS hard disk one, just in case we create a hard disk two later on. And I'm going to assign it 16 gigabytes in size. Recall, it's a dynamically allocated hard disk, which means it will only be minimal in size and it will grow as and when needed up to a maximum of 16 gig. OK, I'm going to select Create. And this has created our FreeNAS hard disk. So finally, to affect those changes, select OK. OK. The next step is to boot the FreeNAS operating system on the virtual machine for the very first time. So ensure that FreeNAS is selected and then select the green start button. And this will boot up the FreeNAS virtual machine. I'm going to dismiss the auto capture message. Select enter and press, select the virtual box and press enter. This gives us the option to boot up normal boot up, single user mode or verbose mode. We're going to select normal boot up mode. And now it's going to boot up the operating system, the FreeNAS operating system for the very first time. So once again, I'm going to dismiss the notification message. Now this installation can take a little bit of time. Um, this part I think will require roughly a wait of between 20 and 30 seconds. But it's no harm to have a look at the various messages that are displayed. Um, they're quite informative. It tells you pretty much every step of the installation process, what the FreeNAS operating system is doing. So it's attempting to mount the root ZFS file system. Very good. Loading the kernel modules, mounting the file systems, mounting the ZFS volume, now it's creating an initial install boot environment. Very good. Very, very good. It's loading all the various services that's required. Now it needs to create a DH parameter 2048 bit long safe prime key. This is going to take a long time. So it is going to take a long time. 
I'm going to let this continue, but later on I will edit the video such that it will skip the portion of the, uh, that displays all of this information. There's no point you as a user watching all of this information. Okay, as you can see, it's now generating another prime number. The second time seems to have been a lot quicker than the first. Now it's loading various plugins. Checking for holes, no holes found. Now starting a cron job. Oh, it looks like it's nearly there. Excellent. It's detected um, and it's configured successfully the web interface. Okay, this is fantastic. So now I should be able to open up my browser and go to this IP address and be able to administer free NAS directly from there. So let me do that. Um, the IP address is 192.168.0.3. Let me go back just to verify. At 0.3. Very good. And let me type it exactly as specified and hit enter. I'm perfect. I am now able to administer the free NAS operating system via the web browser. So the username is root and the password is whatever password I set when initially installing the free NAS operating system onto the hard, virtual hard drive, which I did in an earlier video. So I'm now going to type in that password and hit enter. And hit login. It's like login, should I say. And excellent. I'm logged in. It now presents me with an initial wizard that I should configure. And this only happens the very first time I install, should I say, the very first time I boot up the FreeNAS operating system and access the web administrative um, browser. So lang language English, that's fine for me. Console keyboard, well, I'm based in Ireland, so I'm going to select Irish keyboard, but alas, there is no Irish keyboard option. So I'm going to select the keyboard associated with my closest neighbor, which is United Kingdom. So I'm going to select that option there, United Kingdom ISO 8859-1. And time zone, well, let, let us hope they have um, Ireland on the menu, Europe and Dublin, which is where I'm based. Excellent. So select next. A volume name. Now here's the thing. We created a blank virtual disk, recall the free NAS hard disk one, but we now need to create a volume for this hard disk. And we can configure it in a number of different ways. I'm going to leave the default option, which is choose an automatic reasonable defaults based on the available drives. So I'm going to call it free NAS disk, no, free NAS, why not, volume, Vol1, for, which is associated with disk1. So, so there's some sort of logic to my naming convention. Estimated size 14 gigabytes. This to be formatted as ADA1, which is a virtual disk. Great. Select next. This is going to take a few moments. The directory service. Again, this is extremely useful, particularly in an enterprise environment. Um, for the purposes of demonstrating free NAS uh, on a virtual machine, I don't need to activate. Active Directory, so I'm simply going to select Next. I can set up a share. I do want to set up, set up a share, but I wish to demonstrate that um, from the main administrative uh, browsing window rather than from this menu. So I'm going to select Next. Um, console, again, you can configure outgoing mail server, various ports, console messages to be displayed show console messages in the footer, and so on. Again, for the purposes of this demonstration, none of that is necessary, so I'm going to select Next. You're about to leave the initial wizard and perform all pending saved actions. Are you sure? Yes, I am. So I'm going to confirm. I suppose the, real, the only main action is that I'm creating a volume. Um, so, let it, and exactly, that's what it's doing. It's creating the volume. Um, restarting the services. Very good. 
So it's nearly there, 88% complete. Now there are many services, as we will see um, in the next video. I will go through, brilliant. The initial configuration has succeeded and it's fully set up. That's all I wish to demonstrate in this video. In the next video, I will go through all the various options that are available via the web administrative browser. Thank you very much.